It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. About two years ago, the financial press was busy promoting the tiny country of Latvia as proof that austerity works. For example, in May 2016, Bloomberg ran an article with the headline, Austerity Worked for Latvia. Following the 2008 global financial crisis, Latvia faced a serious crisis of its own and its economy shrank by 25%. The government responded by applying austerity measures, such as cutting the public workforce by 30%, raising sales tax and introducing a flat tax. Its economy grew again quite steadily between 2011 and 2016. It was so successful, it, held, it was held up as an example and was admitted to the EU in 2014. Now, however, Latvia is in the headlines again, but this time for problems in the bank, banking sector. The U.S. Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network is accusing various banking officials of criminal activities such as money laundering, violation of sanctions against North Korea, and of taking bribes. Joining me now to explore the Latvian case and whether its success is related to the banking sector's shady activities is Bill Black. Bill is a white-collar criminologist, associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's the author of Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks again for joining me, Bill. Thank you. Bill, uh, first give us some background about the uh, accusations that are being made against Latvian bankers and how serious these accusations are. Well, substantively, the allegations are very serious and they fall into two uh, areas, as you uh, noted in your introduction. One is that Latvian banks, uh, not just one, but uh, now it is alleged at least three, uh, were critical to uh, helping North Korea uh, evade financial sanctions, um, and uh, this was critical to their ability to uh, produce their um, great advances that they've shown uh, in uh, ballistic missiles uh, designed to be able to deliver nuclear weapons at extremely long ranges, including uh, all of the continental United States. So essentially pretty much the world. Uh, the second uh, has to do with the head of the Latvian Central Bank, who is particularly identified with the austerity regime, where he is alleged uh, to have sought a 100,000 uh, euro bribe, uh, was arrested, uh, and is out on uh, bail. Um, the U.S. sanctions have uh, produced liquidity crises at some of these banks uh, in Estonia. So they are seeking, of course, uh, I'm sorry, Latvia, uh, emergency financial aid from the central bank <laughs> where the central banker <laughs> has uh, been arrested. And the EU has said, we're not going to provide you with a liquidity bailout. So Latvia may be back in the kind of banking crisis it was in in 2008. So key takeaways in all of this, uh, the, again, the 2008 financial crisis wasn't just a crisis in the United States and the, you know, the parts of the EU like Greece and, and such. It was a devastating crisis and it was particularly devastating uh, among other, uh, other areas in the Baltic states. The way that uh, Latvia's government reacted was to go whole hog into the most neoliberal program possible. You mentioned some of these elements. So they made the taxing system favor the wealthy and go after the uh, poor uh, and the working and middle classes. They also had had uh, an enormous brain drain uh, during the critical years of the crisis. If you were a university graduate, in Latvia, you knew you couldn't get a job in Latvia and you tended uh, to go elsewhere. So the best and the brightest, and it turned out the most moral, uh, frequently left. And th this meant 
that they created this perfect neoliberal, come on in um, to the worst elements uh, of the society. Some native born uh, Latvians and some uh, who came from outside and some who had uh, Latvian ancestry and uh, came back to the country saying, boy, have you made this environment perfect for us to do all kinds of slimy things. So uh, Latvia also um, shares a border uh, with uh, Russia and is a major um, trading partner. So even while it was joining the European Union, it was actually very much uh, in with the oligarchs uh, in Russia who have been heavily involved for a long time in helping uh, North Korea and Iran and such uh, evade uh, sanctions. So yeah. it's no surprise that they've moved uh, in, in this direction. Now, some economists, Bill, have argued that Latvia is proof that austerity works. What is your response to this claim? And is the success uh, of implementing austerity, austerity related to the recent accusation of criminal activity in Latvia's banking sector? Yes, indeed, they have uh, um, held Latvia up as the very model of uh, uh, what they call, uh, you know, uh, austerity that supposedly was going to produce recovery. Austerity didn't produce recovery in Latvia. What uh, produced the semblance of recovery, but of course the reality of this widespread corruption as well, was that they got rid of the rules and they did what's um, euphemistically referred to uh, as internal devaluation. Now what that actually means is that we crush labor and we crush wages and wages go very low and so we're able to export and in, indeed Latvia was then able to export and because it's a very small country uh, those exports did produce a economic turnaround now of course that's still in a, in a land where they had really severely repressed wages for the working class and for uh, middle class and uh, continued to tolerate a fair degree of unemployment and underemployment for folks as well. So yeah, it works really well for the oligarchs and they do employ people. The unemployment rate drops, but the country uh, invariably becomes uh, extremely corrupt. And of course, uh, if you're neoliberal and very conservative as well, um, then it's your worst nightmare to have your very model of the modern uh, austerity regime that supposedly success uh, is leading the way uh, globally in trying to uh, help North Korea develop uh, the kind of ballistic missiles and uh, miniaturized uh, H-bombs e even, uh, not just atomic bombs, uh, that could be delivered to the continental United States. That's sort of the worst possible thing about your neoliberal regime coming back to bite you uh, and indeed uh, the entire world. Uh, Bill, an analysis conducted by Paul Krugman a few years ago, he compares Latvia's austerity responses to that of Iceland, which took an opposite approach, a Keynesian anti-austerity approach. Uh, Bill, you too have looked into uh, the case of Iceland and Latvia very carefully. What can you tell us about this comparison and what kind of lessons can be drawn from these two different approaches to economic crises. The Icelandic recovery was much better, uh, it's stronger and it helped the, the entire nation and it ended up with a more ethical place. The Latvian uh, could only be done in a very tiny country only by severely repressing wages and inviting widespread corruption. And it's a terrible response. I thank you so much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.